Uh, he's going up against the freshman Rocco Welsh, who's absolutely been living on the edge in his last three matches. Three straight 4-1 wins in the sudden victory. Most recent, Lennox Wallach of Columbia, his opponent in the semis. And Jordan Burroughs, Carter Starachi, his four matches here have been close, none wider than a six-point gap. Yeah, well, he hasn't been himself. I mean, you can see the large knee brace on his right leg. He's been a little bit limited and hindered by the injury that he sustained about a month ago. Some early Man, blood. got blood right away. Early hey, blood time. Rock made a great statement to me earlier. Starachi and Rocco Walsh have wrestled before. And it wasn't as low out as much as you would think. No, it was a very much Rocco Welsh was in that match. And he was healthy. And he was healthy. You're and right. he was healthy so. when they wrestled. Let's see what happens if he's not quite at 100%. Well, Sirachi, he's typically a guy that dominates the field. Coming in to the Big Ten Championships, he was a guy that was in the lead for the Hodge race because he had been pretty dominant throughout the entirety of the season. But he gave up the first takedown in his first two matches of the tournament, which he rarely gives up takedowns. He's a really hard guy to get to. Rocco Welsh is going to see if he can capitalize on the difficulty of him moving that right leg and being mobile here. Well, Rocco Welsh, freshman, but he's so physically strong has been in some really big matches over the course of his young career. And it seems very poised in the big moment. In Ohio State, the Ohio State's having a sneaky good tournament. Got two guys in the finals, already a national champion, and Jesse Mendez at 141 pounds, and got an opportunity to have a true freshman yep. try to stop history here. You know what Rocco Welsh reminds me of? It's kind of like a no-hitter. You're in the bottom of the ninth inning, <laughs> and you've got a guy on the brink of doing something extremely special. Can he stop Carter Starachi from doing what most believe is inevitable? And if he's going to do it, it's not going to be with a bunt. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I he's going to have to. I would try to bunt. If somebody had a no hit on me, I'm bunt. <laughs> I'm gonna walk up to the plate, point to the field, like I'm gonna hit a home run, and I'm a bunt. Do the Babe Ruth of bunting. I'm gonna do the Babe Ruth of bunting. <laughs> we talk about the youth of Ohio State. They have seven guys that came to the NCAA's that had no experience in the NCAA's, and look how they're performing right now. Coach, Coach Ryan said one thing. He said, "Don't let stress become distress." And these young guys have proven that they can be in a tough situation and still perform. Well, and here, here's another thing about Ohio State. You look at Penn State, you look at the landscape of college wrestling, you look at the seniors, you look at the people leaving lineups and who's returning. And when you look at Ohio State, they get a couple guys to develop out of their room or they go and get a guy from somewhere else. And Ohio State has an opportunity to go chase them dudes down like they did that year with Kyle Snyder and all those guys. They won that national title. That's right. They built a really good team. And that was really the start of the transfers when they got a great guy like Joey McKenna at yep. 141 pounds to fill in with Keyshawn Hayes and Nathan Tomasello and Kyle Snyder and the Jordan brothers. We got a stalling already. And yeah, these guys are from that stall call tonight. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with how physical Welsh is, that he's going right there with Carter Starachi, not really conceding. A lot of offense to for Starachi. He recognizes how important it is for him to get a score early. I mean, Walsh has got blood on his forehead. He's got blood on his face. These little half shots are making a difference. Just keep shooting them out. That ref is going to get him again. That's the second stall on Welsh and the first point for Starachi. That's quick, Rob. With, with experience in this Ohio State room, Rocco Welsh said on the podium last night, one of his biggest influences, a three-time All-American teammate who's not wrestling this year, Sammy Sasso. He was shot last year. He's on the road yep. to recovery. We hope to see him back out on the mat soon. But one of the biggest reasons that he went to Columbus, Ohio, and has remained one of his biggest influences there in the room. One thing I didn't expect from Carter Starachi going into this tournament is him to be the guy that was pushing the pace on everybody. That's one thing he's done really, really well this weekend. He has been very physical. He set the pace for every match he's been in. He's made these guys wrestle the type of matches that he wants. So while the guy making the stall calls a little quickly, Carter has set that pace and making him do it. And as they start the second, Angel Rivera reminding Welsh of the two stall calls against him. Angel. <laughs> More blood. blood. More blood. Ah. I like that. I like that. 
I like that. Angel Rivera was very aware there. He didn't want to have to call him for stalling. He saw the blood. Let's reset. This. Reset this. Let me try to keep myself out of the match. I don't want to be forced into a situation where I got to be playing a part in this match. Usually when you see freshmen keeping a match close with a multiple time national champion All-American, you start to think that they're getting more and more confident. But Carter Starach has been in so many tight matches. I know, I know, and of all the things that he has with his ability, his technique, it's his mental toughness and the dog in him that he will not concede anything. Yeah, he's, he's, he's showed a lot of determination and grit. Any skepticism we had about his ability to stay focused yes. and to, to go out and compete at a high level has been alleviated. Look at this, this was the last dual meet of the season. He gets himself intertwined with opponent from Edinburgh and finds himself going into the Big Ten tournament with a knee injury. They have, it's undisclosed. No one knows yeah. exactly what happened, but that knee brace is a big indication that it was serious. Right away, he took his headgear off. He knew he was hurt. He knew he was hurt. And so that's why he's the number nine seed here. That was a big topic of discussion before the brackets came out. Where would Carter Storacci get seeded? Because he had to take one second injury defaults in two matches at the Big Tens. And you saw initially on our, our brackets, we got him early. Uh, he was the seventh seed. And then they reseeded the bracket. I tell you, man, for one day, I was the most important man in NCAA wrestling. I told everyone I had the brackets early. I just never showed them. Everybody was calling me rock. I was important, man. I'm like, you guys would not believe this. They're like, what? Well, I got the bracket. You got my number. Can you I know? Can me? I know? No, you had it too. You just didn't check your email. <laughs> you could have been the man, bro. It felt so good. As well stays in there in the middle, he's going to have to make a tough decision. That's, do you want to go underneath Carl Storacci? But Carl Storacci is holding center. He's staying right in that NCAA. His feet are in there. He's staying right in the middle. Like a phone booth. You're just going to stand there and battle, hand fight. This is very tiresome. Jordan, if you're Rocco Welsh, are all your attacks going to the bandage leg? Absolutely. I'm, Everyone, I'm right? attacking that thing like Bro. crazy. But you know what? This, this, Rocco Welsh is still young. And one of the last parts of your game to develop as a, a college wrestler when you make that transition from high school is your hand fight. Yep. It takes a long time to learn how to stay disciplined in the center, to stay poised, to continue to control ties and hold your ground. And you can see that's why Carter Storacci is beating him up here in the center. Yeah, Carter's really good with the hands, always in control. You hear Logan Stever telling him to keep wrestling. Storacci is playing the game, too. Yep, a lot of little knee fight. shots, yep. Those half shots. A lot of knee shots to walk him back to the edge of the mat. That's a good call there. You're right. Those are half shots, but keeping his opponent honest. So let's see what let's see what else decides to do. He doesn't have to go bottom, right? 2-0, you don't have to go bottom. But if you go neutral, neutral. you risk giving up another stolen call relatively quickly because Storacci's played the but game how really is well Storacci here. on the mat, man, on top of seen it all tournament. That's right. Well, let's think about this. It puts Welch in a pretty good situation to maybe sneak one out. Yeah. It doesn't have to be much. He can play the game just as well and sneak it out. He gets a takedown. Storacci gets away. Still 3-3. Three, three. Well, it depends on when he gets it. Yep. One of the things about injuries, guys, it typically it sharpens up all your other senses, right? Yep. When you lose the ability to be flexible and mobile with your right leg, all of a sudden you start to understand, okay, I've got to hold center. I've got to hand fight, control the wrist, control ties, do things I wouldn't typically do. He looks really sharp and disciplined in the stance. Well, one of the, one of the things about Welsh is if he doesn't get this score relatively go, early, Storach is going to continue to move him off to the edge trying to get him caught stalling again, but now Walsh is the one on the gas. Yeah, and Sirachi's looking notably different in this third period. He went from going centered, forward pressure, to now backwards. I don't love it, but he's looking to protect his lead now, up 2-0 yep. late in the match. You're right, you're oh, right about you, that. It's noticeable, it's very noticeable. We were saying in the second period, we were saying Carl Sirachi's yeah, right at the NCAA. No, he's the other way around. And Welsh is still in this match. It doesn't take much. Where's that call? Where's that stall call, Angel? Well, Welch isn't shooting. That's the problem. He's moving, but he's yeah. not really shooting. Good job by Storacci there, circling off the edge. Mm. You hear the crowd starting to... They're starting to moan. Nice re-attack there by Storacci. Bob Sirachi, just hold on. hold on to the leg. He's got a shelf it. Look, look how he locks out that foot. That locks out the hamstring. Elevates. Yeah. yeah. 
Welsh had his foot hey, off the mat. Hey, hey, stop. Let me, hey, hey. Pick up your <laughs> hey, he ain't showing no love here. No what love lost here. Like, hey, bro, I don't care what you're trying to win tonight. What a re-attack by Starachi. Eight seconds. Eight seconds left. Let's see what he can do. Go backwards. Oh, he's in a circle, yep. That's that circle. That's going backwards. Run, run away. I win two to one. I'm good with it. Well, with one member of an exclusive club watching in the other corner, Logan Stieber. Now Carter Starachi joins that club. He is the sixth four-time Division I wrestling champion. What a phenomenal career. You know, they, there's extra love yeah. there. Extra love. Watch him go and hug the trainer, too, because that's a real champion this yes. weekend. Yes. That guy had the last month to get this guy in shape and prepared to make history. Sometimes when you're injured and you're in position, it really humbles you because you've yes. got to rely on your team. You can no longer be the, the one-man show. Yep. You're not the warrior anymore. All of a sudden, you become into this person where you have to rely on everyone. And that's a lot of humility that he had to operate with this weekend. So the trainer, shout out to him. He's a real champion for PSU. And let me tell you something, real. Carter Starachi getting through this, very impressive. Carter Starachi becoming the national champion, ripping off that big brace. Look at all the tape underneath that brace. This man was stitched together to get into the NCAA tournament, wins it, and he still has a year of eligibility. He can be a five-time champion. Hey, I'm wondering if he discloses that injury finally in this interview. I, I, I'm wondering about that, too, because I'm really curious. I'd love to hear if it. it's going to be like a specially S type of interview a couple years ago. Especially are for Wusses. Won, won a title with two torn ACLs. Let's go to Q for the answers. Congratulations. You took some time at, at the center there to take off your knee brace, and we see what you're dealing with. What is that? Man, it was hard. Yeah. It's like 12 days ago, I was on crutches. And again, I'm, I'm not gonna get you wrapped up in it because I decided to wrestle, you know? So it really doesn't matter what it was, but that man in the, in the corner behind those three coaches, Dan Monthly, man. he's the national champ. I mean, I'm talking, he was in the hospital two in the morning, three in the morning on Sunday mornings, every day, all day. So it's just, it's just a blessing to be at Penn State. Is that a torn ACL? No comment. Dan is a special guy. Special guy. So he's he's as big as, as anybody here. I think I think the entire the, the entire Penn State, like I said, like the, these coaches, I mean, they're all in. They're they're super dedicated. And it just that just that just feels me every single day just watching those guys go at it. And damn monthly, I mean seriously, I mean I wouldn't be walking if it wasn't for him. You know, he looked me in my eyes and said, Hey man, this can be a long road. And I said, Can we go to Big Tens? And he was like, I don't know, but no, but NCAA's will get you there. So he said, just keep having the faith, and I just believed in him, and it just went made it happen. He got you here. You think about winning four championships. You don't think about something like a knee. What's this accomplishment? What comes to the top of your mind when, when someone says Carter Stracci, four-time champion? I said, you're damn right. I said, you're damn right. I see it every day. I work for it. And everyone wants their hand raised on Saturday night, but it starts on Monday morning, you know? And this is all cool, and I've always dreamed of being a four-time men's state champion, but this, this is little kid stuff to what I want, you know what I mean? That Olympic gold medal is what I want, and my eyes are on April 19th and 20th, and uh, that's my focus. So on Monday, it's all good here. Everyone's screaming your name, but on Monday, it's, it's back to work and it's business, and just like Drake said, there's no friends in this industry. Carter, it's been a pleasure to watch you, man. Thank Great you job. Much. I appreciate Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Jordan? Man, I tell you what, he said April 19th and 20th. I know a guy that's going to be there, and I'd love to see him. I tell you what, if him and I meet each other in the bracket, I'm going right for that right leg. He won't disclose the injury, but, man, he's looked great. Let me, on a more serious note, Carter Sirachi has had a phenomenal career. If you think about Zane Rutherford, Bo Nickel, David Taylor, Jason Nolf, Ed Ruth, all of these, Vincenzo Joseph, all of these champions from Penn State, you have to, as a four-time champion, put him on the Mount Rushmore for the Nittany Lions. Incredible he joins career. Yanni, Logan Steber, Kyle Dake, Kale Sanderson, and along with Pat Smith, those two are the only to do it at the same weight class four times.